Hello and welcome back to RPG Research. Uh, today is Monday, November 5th, 2018. It's now 6.52 p.m. Pacific time and we're, we are doing the applied gaming. We're using the classic game Twilight 2000, a military survival game in now an alternate post-apocalyptic uh, setting of the United States. Um, this game was originally made back in the 80s when the Soviet Union was still in power. Um, and it was assumed they were going to remain in power, so before the fall of the Berlin Wall and all of that. Uh, it's by Games De Game Designers Workshop, and um, it comes with a 24-page player's manual, a 32-page referee's manual, and that's it for the core rules. And then you've got like equipment lists and maps, and like a 12-page equipment list, and stuff like that, and maps and everything else. But it, the rules are fairly lightweight even though they're pretty gritty. It is a gritty system with not heavy rules but enough complexity. Um, and as you see with the character generation there's a fair amount of math there. Um, so I'm going to read uh, a little bit of this intro to everybody for those of you who didn't catch our Thursday character generating. And we're going to finish generating characters and then we'll go ahead and get the beginning adventure started. <coughs> so this is from the back of the box. I'm going to go ahead and switch into my radio mode here. <clears throat> Some people just listen to these in the car and such. So. For five years, the armies of the world have fought back and forth across Europe. Three years ago, the missiles started flying. Most countries were hit hard in the nuclear exchange, but no one had a decisive advantage and the war went on. Tanks began breaking down, and the supply of spare parts gradually dwindled to zero. The sophisticated artillery weapons have shot off all of their ammo, and no one is capable of producing any more. Divisions, which started with 20,000 men, are lucky to put 2,000 into the field. But the war goes on. You are part of the remnants of the leading U.S. division of NATO's last drive into central Poland. There isn't much in the way of organized military forces left on either side and the local warlords, militia, and murderous bands of marauding deserters rule the countryside. Your division has been overrun, and your group is hundreds of kilometers from the nearest friendlies. The last message from division headquarters read, Good luck, you're on your own. Twilight 2000 is unique in the field of role-playing games. It's set in a post-Holocaust environment, but the characters are modern soldiers thrown onto their own resources by the gradual breakdown in the command of the command structure and civilization. Modern equipment is there, but very rare. Gasoline is almost non-existent, so units carry alcohol stills to make their own fuel from methanol and ethanol. People remember what it was like before the war, but civilization is unraveling everywhere. The war goes on, and that's the least of a character's problems. Um, so, and it's got a little fine print here, but actually it's probably worth reading for folks that are interested. Uh, this game's a little hard to track down, um, but it turns out they have republished it. Um, <clears throat> see, I bookmarked this. There was a company who bought the rights, and you can buy the hard copy of this game. So that's part of our rule for what we use for any programs, is that it has to be available in print somewhere. It's great if it has PDF, but we're, we're not really interested if it doesn't have a physical copy. Uh, that's a higher priority. So let me see if I can find that link. That, let's see. Um, where did I see? Twilight. Twilight 2000 print. Um, where is it? There's an encyclopedia. Okay, I think I might find it through Wikipedia. And I already read the Wikipedia listing on Thursday, so if people want to hear about that, go ahead and you can either read it on Wikipedia or you can listen to our discussion about that. Um, from our Thursday broadcast, if you're a Patreon supporter. Um, come on. And then there was Twilight 2013. If you want to grab the hardcover, is it there? That's tw Twilight 2000. Is it not there? Did somebody borrow it and not put it back? 2000? It's a hardcover book, so oh, it's, not, it's not where it belongs. Huh. I wonder if it's... Wait, found it. Found it? Okay. It's just not... Okay. So that, unfortunately, is I've listed as one of the worst organized role-playing games ever. It's so broken, it's, it's almost impossible to run. You have to grab a whole bunch of online resources to figure it out. 
I don't even want to hold that up to the camera. <clears throat> and it's really unfortunate because because they brought it up to date to the modern polit uh, political situation of 2013 with the same feel of Twilight 2000 was the idea, but it's so disorganized and so badly edited and written, it's basically unusable. And we're big fans of Twilight 2000. We really wanted it to work. And so I have a whole review of it from years ago when it came out about one of the worst organized role-playing games I've ever seen. One of. Not the, <laughs> but certainly in the top ten worst organized. Um, what would you consider the worst organized? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I, yeah, you, if you point it out to me, go, oh yeah, that one, that one's really bad. So the memory, so, of, memory of it is fractured. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, where is that website that Come on. There, there's a website that has it. They got the rights. Let's see. I'll try hard. No. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Purchase. I stumbled across it when we were doing this last time and was shocked to find that somebody was... But it was a company I'd never heard of. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. It's important that we find this for anybody else who's interested. Because it's not on Amazon. It's not Wayne's Books. Uh, far Future Enterprises, maybe? That it? Ah, there it is. Farfuture.net. Far Future Games. Far Future Enterprises Games. FFE. So you can buy the the rule books um, for about 35 bucks for the set, which is pretty average. Um, or you can get the PDF, but you can actually get hard copy uh, version of it. So that's, that's good that it's still available. Um, so here is, I'm going to read... I guess I can print it. I'll give you guys a copy of the... They've got it on the website, freely available. The Player's Guide to Twilight 2000. This kind of gives you the history of the current situation. You don't have to know all of this to play the game starting out, but long, for a long game, you need to know. You need to know where forces are and what direction to go and to make the hard decisions. Um, but I'll give you a brief uh, reading from it. They, um so this is from the Player's Guide, Twilight 2000 Version 1, role-playing in the aftermath of World War III, basic information about the Twilight 2000 role-playing game system. The 1980s were a time of apprehension, with the Soviet Union a superpower co-equal with the United States in world affairs. And, and this is appropriate because you guys are younger. You're young enough that this wouldn't be as fresh for you either. You'd still been pretty young in the 80s, right? Um, I, I was born in 82. Yeah, so you would have been pretty young too. So, because I was born nineteen seventy, so for me the eighties were the late seventies. Like I lived through the gas crisis. My dad to work around the gas crisis because we literally were watching people run out of gas, waiting at the gas station, the long lines. You would run out of gas and have to push your car in, waiting in line for hours in California. So to solve that, um, we lived up in in Santa Rosa, up on the hillside there. He he had two like 500 gallon drums put up there on trestles on our property we had a few acres up there and would have a fuel truck deliver to that periodically um because he'd buy it bulk and only had to do it like once a year or something because and it had to be two because we had a, a diesel mercedes and then uh, everything else was regular uh, you know this is before unleaded was well it was right around but anyway we had we had some uh, a plymouth station wagon and I think an Audi, and those were running gas, and then the Mercedes on diesel. So we'd have diesel and, and regular, and so we had our own little gas thing there on the hillside um, to get around because he was just fed up with running it, you know, with how much trouble. It was really hard to get gas for a while, um, and that was because of OPEC. And then, you know, anyway, a lot of things changed since then. So I remember it vividly, um, and for me, the '80s were such a, a nice turnaround from how much the '70s sucked. The 70s were a dark, awful time, 
and the 80s were just bright, a big turnaround, lots of optimism and everything. I was at 180 degrees from the malaise, as Jimmy Carter put it, that we were in. The new normal was how, basically what he said in the 1970s. Well, this is the malaise. We're in a malaise. This is, about, this is how you can expect things to be going forward. Not a very optimistic message. Um, Reagan came in with a much more optimistic message. And you know what? The power of psychology. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever uh, economic policies, that's one thing. But the power of psychology is really strong to, if you can get people to, to buy into it. Well, there's, there's an argument that uh, um, I've come across that uh, has argued that one of the reasons why the Depression was so bad was that people were in a depression. Yeah, and you kept, and everybody fed the Depression mm -hmm. psychologically. They're like, yeah. there is no hope. Give up hope, all ye who enter here. <laughs> well, that's not a motivator. <laughs> if you want people to push through a hard time, you need to motivate them. Um, so, yeah, so we were locked, locked into Cold War. 1981, there was a, one of the most watched television shows on broadcast television was The Day After with Jason Robards, and it was The World Got Nuked, and then The Days After Surviving the Nuclear Holocaust. And this was broadcast primetime television. It was brutal. People's flesh, and I mean, this was brutal. This is how scared everybody was, right? You had duck and cover in the 60s and 70s. We all had to train to duck under our desks in school. We all had nuclear alert drills and well, such. I was trained for that. So they, they even still were doing it then. Okay. Uh -huh. I was out of high school by, by the mid-80s. It was elementary so. school. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it was a genuine threat. And there were a couple of close calls from the Cuban Missile Crisis forward. There were a couple of close calls where some it, it, one itchy trigger finger and it would be a very different world. See, it always confused me because I understood, like, okay, nuke. Me being under my desk isn't going to do no. a thing. <laughs> it, it is like a lot of security measures, a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. The whole TSA thing is a false sense. I'm information security specialist it, it, and physical security guy for years. It's security theater. But it is psychology, and yeah. it does make people feel safe, and that's what they want to feel. Anyway, so it was, the world was locked into Cold War, had been since the end of World War II. Neither side dared escalate their conflict beyond minor border skirmishes and regional wars, and, of course, all of the espionage stuff. I've been watching recently um, The Americans on, on FX. They're catching up on Prime. And that's about these Russian spies that were, you know, planted here. And it, it's fictional, but based on a lot of, you know, real stuff. Um, around 1982 or so, 83. Um, yet each side maintained massive stockpiles of nuclear weapons as de uh, deterrent to wo world war and with the associated danger that they would someday use them. And that was called MAD. Mutually assured destruction. It's like, well, you don't want to be destroyed. We don't want to be destroyed. So as long as we know that both sides are going to get destroyed, yeah, that's why we're building more missiles. <laughs> they, they actually made a movie about that. There have been multiple. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking Dr. Strangelove. Well, yeah, there was <laughs> Dr. Strangelove. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Um, President Ronald Reagan's uh, address to the House of Commons set the tone in June 8th, 1982. Should I try to do my Reagan impersonation? Oh, please. <laughs> let's see. If history teaches... Let's see. <clears throat> well, <laughs> oops. I thought it was the alarm clock. If history teaches anything, it teaches self-delusion in the face of unpleasant facts is folly. We see around us today the marks of our terrible dilemma. Predictions of doomsday, anti-nuclear demonstrations, an arms race in which the West must, for its own protection, be an unwilling participant. At the same time, we see totalitarian forces in the world who seek subversion and conflict around the globe to further their barbarous assault on the human spirit. What then is our course? Must civilization perish in a hall hail of fiery atoms? Must freedom wither in a quiet, deadening accommodation with totalitarian evil? President Ronald Reagan speech to the House of Commons, June eighth, nineteen eighty two. Sure, that was so. not not like this year. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> it was the, it was in this pervasive atmosphere of fear of impending doom that Twilight two thousand burst onto the role playing scene, uh, Thanksgiving, November twenty sixth, nineteen eighty four. Now, how Orwellian is that? <laughs> Traditionally, the Thanksgiving to Christmas period was the highest game sales period of the year and game publisher GDW worked hard to ensure that their new game would be available by Thanksgiving. To make a strong announcement of the game's availability, GDW ran three full-color pages in Dragon Magazine, 
they appeared f- for November. The response was gratifying. The initial Twilight 2000 box game print run of 10,635 was exhausted by March, and another print run of 10,000 was ordered for April. So the challenge of military role-playing. So this is what RPG research. So we discuss, we play the games, we do applied, and we talk about it, too. So hopefully people learn stuff they didn't know. We, we learn stuff every show. Uh, serious role-playing games are built around drama, and there is no situation more dramatic than that of a soldier in wartime. So you might think the military is a natural setting for role-playing. However, RPGs work best in anarchic situations, whether where the player characters are their own bosses. And in the army, discipline and coordinated group action are the keys to success. To get around this, the most successful military RPGs have settings where small groups can act with a large degree of autonomy on commando raids, during guerrilla warfare, or, most popular of all, after civilization is broken down due to Holocaust or invasion. The first attempt at military role-playing was Eric Goldberg's Commando in 1979, which was primarily a board game of small unit combat that had some role-playing features. Uh, We did that with Car Wars. I don't know if you're familiar with Car Wars. So Car Wars was based kind of on the Mad Max original thing, you know, post-apocalyptic. Guzzolina. Yeah, and and, and it had to do with running out of gas. But So this was really a board game of cars that you could mount machine guns and rocket launchers and everything else on and drive around town. And you had, we've got maps and simple rules for combat. But it was really easy to role play it. Like, it was just really easy to just add role play to it and then have the shootouts and fun with the cars. Uh, later, the Steve Jackson Games made the actual role playing game and has published the role playing game a number of times. That is, that is a fun game. And very simple. Um, yeah. <coughs> Uh, The first version of the Morrow Project, 1980, by Timeline, was also mainly a set of combat rules, but the designers were perceptive enough to set in a uh, post-Holocaust future where the players could have freedom of action. This was also the case with Aftermath Fantasy Games Unlimited 1981, a game of paramilitary survival after a nuclear war. These were followed by Behind Enemy Lines by FASA 1982, a World War II game, Recon, RPG Incorporated 1982, set on the fringes of the Vietnam War, and Merc, Fantasy Games Unlimited 1983, which tried to capitalize on the brief public fascination with mercenary soldiers fighting in third world nations. None of these games met with sustained success. It looked as there, though there might not really be a steady market for military RPGs until GDW released Frank Chadwick's Twilight 2000 in 1984. Once again, the setting was after civilization was shattered by World War III, but this time background was more believable and worked out in great detail. The rules were unexciting but solid, and GDW supported them with a steady stream of scenarios and supplements that catered to players' fascination with modern military machinery. Which, by the way, I can, you'll see I've got a copy of uh, Jane's, that, that brown book right there. Yeah, that's an actual military. So, uh, it's Jane's pocketbook of modern tanks and armored fighting vehicles. So, this is actual military issue information. You can totally incorporate this into the game easily. It's got all the pictures, and you can you can use real. The nice thing about this game, the maps. I mean, I know more about Northwestern Europe because of Twilight 2000. And my middle son, who just got, I think he's in the Netherlands right now, or he's in Amsterdam, he's somewhere. But he, he's been there. He knows a lot of these locations because of playing this game. And then he's more of a war gamer as well, so he knows a lot of it because of gaming. Um, but you can use all kinds of real world stuff. And the nice thing nowadays with the internet is if you want to do a game setting uh, anywhere in the world, you can just grab Google Maps and print out the maps and use them. So that's the nice thing about being in the real world. And you can just modify, you know, which, as far as based on the history of what got nuked and not nuked. But you can use Google Maps, no problem, for your settings. Almost any place in Google Maps. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are some restrictions. We're going to play in this, or in this black rectangle. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing to see here. Um, other contemporary military systems debuted in 1986. The Price of Freedom, West End Games. Phoenix Command, Leading Edge Games, Delta Force, Task Force Games, Freedom Fighters, Fantasy Games Unlimited, but none have been able to make much none have been able to make much headway against Twilight 2000, 
which, as of 1988, received a complete update and revision. And uh, so that was Lawrence Schick, Heroic Worlds, A History and Guide to Role-Playing Games, Amherst, New York, Prometheus Books, 1991. So Game Designers Workshop began to make a name for itself in modern military war games with the introduction in 1983 of its Assault Tactical War Game series, consisting of Assault, Boots and Saddles, Chieftain, and Reinforcements. Assault dealt with the capabilities of small units and individual armored vehicles in the modern World War III military environment. Close on its heels in early 1984 came the Third World War Strategic War Series war Game Series, consisting of Third World War, Arctic Front, Southern Front, and Persian Gulf, laying out all of Europe in consistent scale maps in four different games. Third World War dealt with the strategic operations of military units in a hypothetical but generally possible World War III. Is it any wonder that board game publisher GDW turned its attention to a military role-playing game? Initially, Frank Chadwick's design concepts envisioned extreme environments with futures of Mel Gibson's Mad Max and Andre Norton's Starman's Son. Unfortunately, such concepts were already common and not especially successful to the marketplace. The breakthrough came on a long drive back from the Origins Game Convention, Dallas 1983. In an overloaded rental van, Frank Chadwick, Lauren Weissman, Bill Keith, and Andrew Keith talked for hours about a modern military role-playing game which concentrated on equipment and realistic military situations. And by the end of the trip, the concept for Twilight 2000 was far enough along for specific design to begin in earnest. The Twilight 2000 role-playing game is available uh, as eBooks on DriveThruRPG. That's what it claims. Is that true? Let's see if that's true. Do, do, do. If that's you know out of date information or not. Um, let's see, Twilight. Uh, well, oh, there's a GM screen. Well, I might have to get that. Um, yeah, the PDF's available for uh, twenty bucks. Cool. So that's multiple locations you can get this at. Uh, not print on demand there. So again, if you want to print on demand, you got to go to farfuture.net. Um, and so several of the modules are available. Okay, I already read to you the concept from the back of the book. Uh, welcome to 2000 AD. Your equipment was brand new in 1995. Now it's wearing out. Gasoline is rare, so your vehicles run on alcohol you distill yourself. And 5th Division's cavalry, when there was a 5th Division, rode horses. There's not much government left in Central Europe, just warlords, marauders, and free cities. Even the major powers are collapsing. Some units, even whole divisions, are refusing orders and heading home. Your division is gone, and you're hundreds of kilometers inside enemy territory. Fortunately, the Soviets aren't in much better shape than you are. Your job is to stay alive, find enough fuel and spare parts to keep moving, get home, wherever that is, and maybe even strike at the enemy. The real trick in designing a role-playing game is to provide detailed, accurate effects with simple systems. That takes inspiration a lot of work, and that's what we did. Twilight 2000's comprehensive rule, rules cover combat skills, survival, encounters, and more with easy-to-use and flexible but well-defined systems. Um, and then there's a huge list. That's the list of uh, supplements. Yeah, I only have a fraction of them. Got the stack here. Some of them are going for a pretty penny these days. That's the stack of oh geez supplements, and that's 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 only I think about a half or so. And then as we pointed out last time, there's that was a computer game, like PC, like 1991, very primitive graphics. <laughs> Pass that around and let them see. You can pass those around too. These are handy. You guys will be interested because they have pictures of all the weapons and equipment. So if I say, you know, you see a, a fab or a Hummer, it show we can I can show you pictures out of these books and such, which helps you visualize. Um, oh, there's another whole page of modules. Um, yeah, this is a pretty good little printout. Covers a lot of it. So anyway. That gives you guys a, a rundown of what it's about. Let's go ahead and wade into getting your characters finished. And then actually if we can try to get the opening adventure played. Um, so, this out of the way. So, room. This over 
here. And though it's been a while, so I'm a little rusty on the mechanics, I know the setting really well. So, so the role play part I can do no problem. I'll have to refresh on the mechanics, and I might make a few mistakes on the way. Forgive me if I do. Um, but we'll get there. Um, so, for now you have an idea of what the setting is like. For you, it's really simple. Grab 4d6, and they should be by the stapler there, I think. Um, yeah, just go ahead and move all that out of your way. Yeah. So you need 4d6. And you're going to roll. Now, there's an option to fudge, like to, to um, favor and slight. If you know what you want, to say, oh, I want this to be stronger at the cost of this one. All right. But for learning the game, don't even worry about that. Just roll it in order. If it, if it looks like you're going to have two... So, like, John wanted to play a specific type of character, so he went back and re-rolled. And then he did some favor and sliding because he wanted to specifically be a combat medic because that's what he was in the military in real life. Oh, wow. And he wanted to play that. Uh, yeah. John's a veteran. Oh, nice. um, uh, go for and all of that. So nice. uh, thank you for your service, John. <laughs> um, and, uh, and he was a combat medic. And then later in, in civilian service, he was an LPN, you know, a, a licensed practicing nurse. Oh, that's right. He worked okay. in, at the care facilities. He also did in-home in care. Um, and then he's our vice president. Uh, of RPG research. He's volunteer number two. I'm number one, and <laughs> he's number two. So, and you're like 42 or 44, something like that. So, cool just say, but I here. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> Welcome to the group of mad men <laughs> and mad women and mad everything in between. All right. Um, so, just roll, and then you'll see on your worksheet, you just put them in order. It tells you, so you just roll the actual roll. That's the column you will write in, is, is roll. Oh, okay. okay, so you'll just write those as you roll. And Riley, if you want to witness his rolls, because I can't see them from here. And you subtract uh, four four from your total. Oh, just Because you can get a zero. Oh, okay. You can actually well, get if you zero. get a zero, then you, you can re -roll. Re roll Yes, but it is possible to get a zero. So you take that total up and then subtract four. Okay. Do I have your character sheet or do you have your I have mine right here. Good. Because I wanted to work, um, on work on it. But did you get a chance to? I did. Oh, good. Good. Is it done? I don't know. Okay. Oh, right. I like it. Um, I got to equipment. Okay. And realized that my character can't carry much. Because of the low strength. Yeah. That, that can be a challenge. Now, the good thing is vehicles can carry extra equipment. Yeah. And horses and etc. I've got to pay attention to that. Shoot. <laughs> vehicles yes, can also... Your carrying capacity. Yeah. Vehicles yeah. can also blow up. <laughs> Ooh. Which often happens in this first engagement. So I have a question. I don't know if you know. So for all of this, they have like S's and C's and R's and V's next to them. Yeah. What do those exactly mean? Uh, I think that was available. Uh, um, I think it was availability. Yeah. Um, let me. Like C is common. R is rare. Let me let me get my equipment list them. out and I'll. It's probably in the main, oh, like the are. actual equipment list that details equipment. Okay. I think explains all of that. I have to read quite a bit of military stuff to you guys, so... Because um, now that you've lost your commanding officer, <laughs> John being gone... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. He was, well, <laughs> he's your only officer. We'll see what happens here with Ooh, Ryan. I just but at least John had real military experience, so that's going to be rough for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Uh, it'll be fun. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, here's from the original copies where I glued it on to like, make my screen. Wow. Because this is all, you know, photocopy days at the library. Oh, I... <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> yep, yep. Here's the maps that it came with. Carefully, it's kind of old. You put that under the uh, camera for a moment. And again, you can always just use Google Maps, <clears throat> which I've done many times. And generally, I, you know, I don't write on the color maps. I make copies and then write on those for each group. Mm -hmm. Maps are very important for this game for tracking where you are. And, um, the game really details where military forces are, etc. So it's important to know. Okay. You don't mind me. Um, I need to listen to something real quick. Okay. I'm trying to pick up an accent. Oh, cool! Great. <laughs> go for it. Because I'm not going to go with the stand. I'm I'm, I'm British. Mm-hmm. I will but be speaking pick English. A specific one. I'm going to be 
Let's just say that the, the British are known for their various colonies. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Is it Africans or something? <laughs> A bit closer to home for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, so, the islands. Yeah. Makes sense. What? Well, okay, I should probably change some stuff since there's I can't carry three of those. Because <laughs> of the weight. <laughs> it's way over my weight. Yep. Just, uh, okay. That is a problem. That it would be. Yeah, I, I took a look at just like, you know, I tried to buy bullets. Yeah. Realized, okay, I can buy the, buy the case or but buy remember, the... Remember, you can have extras put in a vehicle. Well, basically what I did was I put, you know, every, all my extra stuff in my rucksack. And my rucksack is in the vehicle. I can't, you know, I can yeah. carry my rucksack or sack around, but it's going to be slower going. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fine. And I gave you a blank character ready. sheet already, right, Ryan? Say again. Did I give you a blank character sheet for later? No. Nope. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. okay. Yep. Can't carry that much ammo with that either. See, it even includes, like, I've got Arkansas and Texas and New York City as different adventure areas, too. Because some groups I played, we they made it all the way back to the States. Some that went down to the Middle East, everybody went different ways. <laughs> so. And how much this is combat-oriented, survival-oriented versus role-play-oriented is... Depends on how much you want to interact with the people you come across. Some people are highly avoidant, and other people are highly engaged. <clears throat> you know, it is good to make relationships, but you have to also be careful because you're in enemy territory. So. So, for example, like a specific town or city, I pulled up Google Maps so I could get the streets of the town. Because I've got the maps of the, the countryside, but the layout of the town isn't always included. So that made it a lot Because they'd say use an encyclopedia back in the 80s. <laughs> now you can just use Google Maps. <laughs> Yes, everything around now. Tell me what you got for your stats, and tell me which stat for each one. Okay. The so, name of it. So far, I'm up to hit capacity. Um, yeah. Before you do the math, just your actual rolled stats. Oh, I see. <laughs> He's uh, so low average. <laughs> That's. Yeah. If you're too low, I might have you re-roll anyway. Oh, okay. Um, so I rolled a ten for fitness. Okay. A four for agility. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, ten for constitution. Okay. Uh, seven for stature. Ouch. A nine for intelligence. Okay. A ten for education. Ouch. And nothing above ten. <laughs> Reroll. <laughs> you got at least one stat. <laughs> you need one stat normal. above average. I'm okay with low stats as long as you have something to counteract. Counteract it. Right. Yes. Everything below average. <laughs> <Okay>. That's brutal. <laughs> yeah. Although he would get the bonus. Um, um, that's the one. Oh no, that was paranoia, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> that was paranoia, never mind. The total. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yesterday. <laughs> That's the problem, I get all these games jumbled in my head from playing so many of them. He'd have high military experience base. Because of the low. Yeah, he'd have He a... can still have a low total, but he's got a one stat yeah. that sticks out. Just something. So, is there are there any stats that di dictate how fast someone runs? Yes. There's some agility. I, I believe it's agility. Agility. Uh, everybody pretty much runs the same speed, though. 
It's your stamina that determines how long you can maintain in a day. Okay. Everybody runs about the same speed. Because I'm trying to figure out, like, the one good stat that I have is agility. <laughs> okay, well, that will help you... I forget what that'll help you with. <laughs> that, that's what I'm trying to figure it out. Doesn't matter. I'll pull it up. I'll, I'll pull it up in the book and we'll, I'll read through all those. How much is the cube like? Because i got to refresh all the mechanics. And everything in this is in the metric system, Ryan, just so you know. Okay. Because so, it was military, and the military, even though the U.S. didn't go metric, the military did. I see. So fitness is a measure of the character's strength in proportion to your size. Together with stature, it is used to determine your actual strength. Fitness is not used after that, and strength replaces it as a basic attribute. That's calculated later. Agility is a measure of the character's coordination and nimbleness. Constitution is your health and physical stamina. This affects the character's resistance to disease and also influences your hit capacity. How many hit points you have? Stature is the physical size of the character. Large stature in indicates great physical bulk. Stature helps to determine strength, but a character may be large and fat but relatively weak, or may be small and wiry but very strong. Stature also affects hit capacity and damage inflicted in body combat. Intelligence is a measure of the ability of the character to perform abstract reasoning. Intelligence primarily affects the ability of the character to learn. It is not the same thing as common sense. How much common sense the character has is determined by the actions of the player themselves. <laughs> no stat for that. <laughs> education. A measure of the extent of a character's prior education. All characters are assumed to have more than a third grade education. A character's education number is the number of additional years of schooling they've attained. Thus, an education level of 9 or above indicates a high school graduate. 13 or above, a college graduate. 15 or above, a master's degree. And 18 or above, a PhD. Or at least equivalent in schooling. Um, favoring, strength, abbreviations, hit capacity. Weight is in kilograms. Load is in kilograms. Throw range. Based on your... Strength. Yeah, twice your strength, military experience. So another cool concept in this is, of course, coolness under fire. And the lower the coolness, the better, right? The lower the coolness, the better, yeah. So I'll read this out loud. We've been in some tight spots now and then, but for some reason I've never lost my head. I don't know why. Wood, who used to be a pre-med student and is the closest thing we have to a medic, says my glands produce too much nor noradrenaline. He says that's why I don't panic during the fireworks, but shake like a leaf when it's all over. Well, I've seen people panic under fire. They don't shake afterwards. Mostly, they lie very, very still. I think I'll keep my glands the way they are. So there's lots of little excerpts like that. Coolness under fire is largely a function of experience in combat and affects how well a character functions in the stress of a life-threatening situation. So then it tells you how to calculate it. Uh, which is on the sheet anyway. A low coolness rating is better than a high one. All negative results are treated as a coolness rating of zero. Uh, then there's RADs, so we track how much radiation you're exposed to because there's consequences oh, to that. that um, what yeah. is a high RAD? Bad. Oh. No, I mean, I, I, need a, better. I need an example. What's a, what's a good RAD to have? Well, let me read about it to you and then I'll yeah, find okay. what that is, but... We accidentally moved through an impact crater once. Didn't bother most of us. But Anderson and the Major both got sick for about a day. Not super sick, but nausea and weakness. Wood says there's nothing to worry about because none of us have anything near a bad dose. But we've got to be careful because exposure is cumulative. The Major and Anderson have been here from the start and have just picked up more than the rest of us. Since nuclear weapons were used earlier in the war, some exposure to radiation is unavoidable. RADs are a measure of the extent of exposure a character has suffered. No character will begin the game with serious or lethal exposure levels for obvious reasons. The number of RADs a character has been exposed to should influence your willingness to take risks in potentially contaminated areas. So you don't have to worry about it being a problem yet. Uh, I think it, and I'll have to find out where the threshold is in the DM's guide. So. 
Watcher's threshold would be 25. <laughs> what are you at? 24. Um, <laughs> oh, here's the starting equipment everybody starts with that you don't have to pay for. Mm -hmm. so I was telling you. Uh, he didn't read from the list he should have read from. Oh. So, yeah, you get one set of fatigues, a weapons belt, a nylon ballistic helmet, one canteen, one first aid kit, two weeks MRE, meals ready to eat, one set of boots, one box of ammo per weapon. So if you're if you're non if you're not an officer, you get your rifle and one box of ammo included. You get that one rifle from the list for your nationality. Mm -hmm. You get to pick one What's a for box? free. Uh, no. It's in the equipment list. It'll say a box of it'll, it'll list like okay. it'll it'll give you a whole box, and that's what it is for that type of ammo. And then two clips, two two magazines to uh, put your ammo in, so that lets you use up one clip, slap in another one, versus having to reload your clips manually. So everybody starts with that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're an officer, then you have a pistol, then you have a box of ammo for that as well, and two clips for that as well. So two clips per weapon. I'm just going to erase ammo. I'm 105 kilograms of ammo right here, so I should probably yeah, you'll be surprised how fast it goes. Well, I can. <laughs> That's three times my carry limit. Y'all, well, again, assume you have a vehicle, mm -hmm. and you put that on your vehicle. I'm not assuming that I have a vehicle. No, you guys already we know. You, you have, we have, you have a two. Goal. You got a, yeah. I'm assuming that I'm not going to have any vehicle. Yeah, well, I, I feel like we're going to put all of our stuff in that the vehicle, and it's just going to get exploded immediately. <laughs> a lot of people get through it unscathed. It just... It's a combination of choices and luck of the draw. Then so why'd you, you know? tell us all the bad times it happened? <laughs> <laughs> to let you know how bad it can be. Yeah. yeah. I've had it where an entire unit got wiped out except for one character. Yeah. Both vehicles destroyed and they limped. They limped through the basically they crawled I don't hear in that. the night. So that's as bad you know. Well, actually I've had entire groups be completely killed in the first game. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I'm going by the assumption. Yes. Assume the worst. Okay. You know, prepare for the worst, uh -huh. hope for the best. Yeah, of course. I'm preparing for the worst. Okay. <laughs> but as far as choosing to have ammo or not, load up. Because if you do make it, you're going to need it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm, as deciding I said, not I, to have it because you can't carry it is not a good decision. As I said, uh, without knowing what I have, mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I still have like a ton of you know, money left. Sure. I can't spend it all. <laughs> right, right. I'm, I'm just going to... Add on what you told me. Sure. Because I have. <clears throat> I have it on a. Let's see the toilet. That's sideways. There we go. Okay. And where was that list of the the uh, equipment that we were supposed to get? I wanted to write it down. That I just read to you? Yeah. Oh, you didn't write it down when I was reading it? I, I'm a slow writer. I'm sorry. Okay, that's mm -hmm. all right. I am too, because I'm going to just grab the stuff. So. You okay. said um, two... Two clips Okay. per weapon that you're automatic. There you go. Assuming you can read my handwriting. Thank you. Can it be whatever size clip I want if there's two different options? Uh, no, it'll be whatever the default is. It's going to be standard military... Because that's all your standard military issue. I know, but so there's two different... Size magazine. So it's probably going to be the smaller. Dang it. Okay. That would be the standard military issue. That's fair. How are you doing there, Ryan? I think I'm getting. Okay. You, you can always use your phone for a calculator if you need to. Yeah, I probably should start with that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly okay. I, I was teasing, I think it was Dan, <laughs> Me, yeah. about what are you doing using the calculator? <laughs> yeah. And he stopped. Like, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Of course you can use a calculator. It, it, it's healthy for me to test myself. It yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah, but some mind. of the math gets a little tougher with some of the division and multiplication. But again, it should all. I mean, there is basic algebra, but it's really basic algebra. Mm -hmm. So for time in combat, yes, is that, is Neb. It, yeah, what is the first symbol there? Is that just like a? That's. Let me come take a look at what you're talking about because I'm. Oh, I know. I know what he's talking about. Yeah. I don't think it. It's like, is that anything? For me to, um. I don't think so. Do I just do you know one ten times d six or does that have something? 
I just didn't know if that meant something like. I can't read that. That's really yeah. bad copy. They're all really bad copies. Yeah, I don't. Drake <laughs> got those from online. I don't know why he didn't use the ones I have here and just photocopied them because these are all good copies. <laughs> but he grabbed them online and they're clearly really low resolution. <laughs> Sorry for that. Oh, no, oh, by the way, is the first aid kit the same thing as a personal med kit? Yes. And how much does that weigh? Yeah, whatever it says in the equipment list. I, yeah. I don't. I, I don't have it on me right now. Cause I don't like looking through this one because you have upside down pages in here and it just makes it really confusing to flip. Uh, unstaple it and fix it because that was an accident. There's another list that isn't reversed. Thing, I, I think caught, it's one that but... Dan has. Why do you staple on both? Sorry sides? about that. Yeah, I only realized it after I stapled it, so go ahead and unstaple it. When you staple it again, the opposite direction. <laughs> so it's stapled from both sides. Oh, I know where they are. I have a whole folder for Twilight 2000. I forgot about it. Uh, my brown folder. I hope it means something, because my rads is way up there. Like, what, <laughs> yeah. you well, Frank and I there. forgot. I have an entire folder of Twilight 2000. Oh, that's not it. Uh, Never mind. Where is my folder? Because it's basically just telling you multiply times your D6, right? Yeah. Yeah, so 220. Two times what? Where's my character sheet folder? Because my military experience base is 110. I don't. Two. I don't. Is your total 10? Well, I'm sure 120. 120 minus total divided by 7? Yeah. Yeah, because that isn't. That's a little high. <laughs> Mine is eight. Already dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means you have a better chance of being an officer and stuff. Well, no, he missed no. it. He messed up because he no. had 220 in his. Because it's hard to read. Well, uh, so. yeah. Well, Let me get you a good. better sheet here if I can find. Okay. Where's my entire folder? Well, you know what? I did. That one changed it. Yes. Hey, uh, let me. I'll get you a decent sheet because that one's way too hard to read. I mean, other than that, I mean, uh, most of it's okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just a weird symbol that you don't really understand. Chris, oh, we do a symbol. So that's seven. It's a lot different from <laughs> ten. Mm -hmm. uh, now I rolled a two for nine and ten. Should I just keep that, or do I re-roll? Like, well, so you got a two on both of them, or you yeah. just roll once? Okay. I rolled two on that two. On you you could probably just keep it. Yeah. I'll just so 14 months in combat. Crap mistake. 14 rats. Okay. <laughs> 10 minus 1 D6. That's 4. Yeah, they're still downstairs. They give me a new stapler. I have several staplers floating around. Oh, don't tell me he used him up. Oh, Drake. There. Okay. Here you go. Well, I'll make a copy. This is much easier to read. Ah, there we go. Oh, I think I want to. That's why you stapled it twice. Yeah, you have to because how thick it is. There we go. Okay. Oh, I went through that time. Yeah, that's because you have the additional pressure. Ah. I'm still not going to find stuff. Also, it's missing page 11. What? what was... Missing page 11? No, it starts on page 11. Of the equipment list? Yeah, and then it goes to page 1, 2. Uh, no well, page so number. page 11 is in the wrong order, then you can stay uh, with the wrong page. No, uh, I, I don't think there is an order, really. For the first uh, three pages, or four pages. Uh, they, maybe it's kind of just stuff that's... over from the other list. I think that's right. Ooh. Oh, page 11 is on the wrong spot. Okay. a lot easier to read. Page 11 is okay. just on the front. Yeah. Just the yeah. Is the character sheet hard to read too, or is it just the worksheet? And is it just the worksheet? You can, you can, you can. Let me, let me the, see. It. The font's a little bit bigger on the character sheet. Oh, it, 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 I don't know where he got that from, but those are crappy. Let me get you a decent. That is from yeah. AnimeFire.com. Oh, those suck. No. Yeah. Let me get you. <laughs> I prefer this one, so I don't have to write again. 
Well, <laughs> during the game, if you misread... It'll be fine. I have okay vision. Don't look at my glasses. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you take a look at that, see, that's much larger. I, can't I don't know why he did that shrunken one. one. Well, I had the quick sheet, so... I haven't really translated. So I, yeah, I need to make a copy of that, but isn't that much you nicer? You got more space sure. and everything. I, I, and I, I, I will gladly I take. Yeah, I'll probably take. Folding under under the pressure. <laughs> there it is. Masters, if you're going to grab an online resource, make darn certain the font, the DPI and font quality is good enough. Don't make it painful for your players. Um, who's going to take care of the vehicle? Probably um, not me. I'm guessing, considering I am, uh, what is it? Uh, who's going to be the, either the driver or the mechanic? I'm only 40 in that, so probably not me. Well, 40's not too bad. I'm the I'm a cavalry, cavalry scout. That's your vehicle info, because it, it, you get, vehicles get their own character sheet. Okay. And uh, what's that? Do I need to maintain this thing? Uh, if it's wheel vehicle, you need um, you need mech, MEC. To drive it, you need WVD. MEC? MEC, mechanic. I do not have MEC. Ooh, that's okay. good. But that's, you can just be the driver. I mean, you may not have a mechanic. Which will be rough. You guys will, your vehicle will not last long without a mechanic. Can we fake it? Can we make, fake it to make it? If you don't have any mechanic skills, you don't know what to do. You just stare at it. <laughs> can I try to make it worse? Yes. <laughs> Always. <laughs> May I borrow the stapler? Uh, the stapler? Yeah. Thank you. Riley? Ooh, see how much nicer that is? No. Okay. No? I'm kidding. I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to hand this down to uh, Ryan and take away the bad one from him? Okay. Uh, and is that worksheet working much better for you? Oh, yes. Yeah. Good, good. Took me then to pick the airplane. Okay. <laughs> so I've got my quick sheet and I'm going to translate everything over to this good one. What's that? food weight. Um, there, there is a calculation for uh, for that somewhere. I'll see if I can find it because it does add up quickly. I'll just keep some in the truck. There's no way I can unplug.
So do you have an equipment list that starts with this page or not? Yeah, I've been okay. here. Good. Somewhere. I guess I'll leave the additions to equipment list out because that'll probably just confuse the issue too much for you guys. Because it's a whole other additions. Ooh. It's a whole other packet. Boy. <laughs> Commanding officer, you guys are going to be missing a lot of uh, report information because you have to have a commanding officer to get the, uh, the military disbursement reports. Well, I don't know how like how actually. You know. See how it goes for Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Help us, Ryan right. Kenobi. You're our only hope. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for for table one with time and end. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I didn't read. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. And so if you're forty nine or less, it's one six sided die. If you're fifty to sixty, it's two six sided dice. Onward. Does that make sense? Um. So I'm definitely forty. I'm fourteen months in. So that would fourteen. Be, yeah. so then you're below forty nine yeah. months, so yes. it's one d six. Wow, that's very little experience for this game. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of us got pretty low. Well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hope your rads are also equally low. What is considered low? Yeah, you never told us that. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I don't like. It sounds like you're dodging the question. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I'm yeah, sorry. If you have anything other than negative, you're dead. <laughs> no, no. I have no rank. Why is there a hole in the table? You have no rank? You always have a rank. You have to at least be one. <laughs> well, it's, it's one plus N, but I rolled a one on table, which is minus one. Wait. What? <laughs> yeah. Because it's time divided by 10, so yeah. 1.4 rounded down is one, right? Okay. Wait, wait. Yeah. And then I rolled a, one, a two. Well, you don't round down until after you. No, no, no. You, you take it. your rank, num rank number. Which is yeah, you can't get one less than plus a one. one, so you're at two. Wait. Oh. What? Actually, right here, where's the... You know. By the way, be warned, chemical warfare is a thing. <laughs> so you're saying we should get gas masks? I'm just letting you know. Okay. Um. All right, radiation. Okay, until you hit 50, you don't have any illness effects. So I'm halfway there? Yep. Okay. Then after you hit 50, every time you're exposed to radiation, you have to make a radiation illness check. Once per day, while you're reaccumulating. So yeah, we don't have an officer. Okay, that happens. Yeah. Yeah, units get fractured, that's what happens. So then it's usually whoever's the highest rank. Well, that would be me. And then if you're all the same rank, then it's the most experience. And if you're all tied on that, then <laughs> you, you have to figure out who's going to... Then that could be interesting. <laughs> we'll, we'll turn it into a democracy. No, we won't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not again, I to say. Communists. <laughs> communists. Democracies don't handle stress all that well. Yeah, they don't move quickly. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Like, we're under fire. Let's vote on what we're going to do. <laughs> Ra okay, raise your hand if you want a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any Looks dissenting? Like zero. Uh -oh. zero. <laughs> <laughs> See how quickly that worked? <laughs> <laughs> democracy in action. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be this ruthless. That's democracy in action. One word, in action. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> so don't forget railroad tracks are a thing and trains are a thing. I have maps for the railroad tracks as well. And time matters in this game, as I said, there's preset events. So generally, if you lollygag, things get worse. Ooh, you want to stay on the move. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, now for my weapons. <laughs> I got the specialty. Okay. Okay. So that you pick, and you roll. So yeah. So you roll two d six. Okay, I rolled a nine. Good, then you qualify for the first one. So which one did you apply for? Which one did you want? Well, okay. You have to oh, pick the one you I'll want. Pick one I want and, then and you have to have the required stat of a 12 or higher with the listed stat. So, so which one are you interested in? Um, hmm. You got a 20? Uh, oh, yeah, for my stature. Nice. <laughs> you got everything you else. Use your grunt. Heavy weapons. Uh, Anybody heavy weapons? Uh, no. You guys could use a weapon specialist. Right, that's but right. it's really a weapon specialist. That sounds you good, yeah. You you want. No, that sounds good, I'll do that. So heavy weapons, because it's hard to qualify for. You know, infantrymen or heavy weapons. Yeah, let's go heavy weapons. That sounds pretty uh, What's your Rambo con? Esque. What's your con? Uh, not high enough. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. Never mind, you can't do either of those. Uh, yeah. He can... Cannon crewman for strength. He yeah, the only matters for strength is cannon crewman. He can, only, he can only do any of the armor ones. What's your intelligence? Ten? Not high nope. enough. Yeah. Okay, well, that's going to limit things. <laughs> okay, so anything that has a blank okay. or strength are the only ones you can try out for. That's basic. Yeah, you can do infantry heavy weapons. There's no special requirements for that. Ah. But there's also tank crewman, cavalry scout, which you do have a cavalry scout, but you don't have a tank crewman. Um, and you could do cannon crewman. So for artillery, um, which is indirect fire and tracked vehicle driving. That's okay. LCG for large caliber gun at half cost, tracked vehicle driving at 20. Um, the way the skills work is it's percentage based for success, basically. Okay. And you can, the maximum you can start out is with an 80%. Okay. And the way you spend points when we get to it is from 1 to 50 is point for point. One point to have 1% okay. from 1 to 50. From 51 to 80, it costs you two points per percent of increase. Okay. So it doubles from 51 okay. to 80. So okay. from 1 to 50, it's pretty easy to get after that it gets tougher. Okay. And then through the game, you can't you can't start out higher than 80. But as you use a skill, you put little chip marks, you know, 1, 2, 4, 5, 1, 2, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. As you get enough successes, you can slowly raise that percentage. Ah, okay. And that, that 80 can slowly become 81, 82, etc. So when it says 20, that means you start at a 20% skill, which is, you, you can't have lower than a 20 in any skill. Oh, okay. So to start a skill, you have to start at 20. So I can do heavy weapons, infantry, or uh, cannon mm -hmm. crewmen. Yep. Or no, I'm sorry, tank crewmen. Well, you can do cannon crewmen as well, because that's strength. Oh, right. Okay. And so yeah, indirect true. fire is half cost. Indirect fire is handy, not just for tanks. Um, there's uh, uh, rifle grenades and mortars, and that's all indirect fire skill. Okay. So that's a, and the nice thing about that is, of course, you can shoot over obstacles and drop them on people. Okay. You don't have to have a clear line of sight to take people out. <laughs> it's a nice, if you have a lot of that, that's pretty handy. A lot of people forget about that one. Maybe I do can crewman. What's that? F and if you do get a tank, then you'll be able to, or I mean, get a, if you get a cannon, you'll be able to use it as well. Right. Uh, so that's forward observer. Oh, okay. But, and, but you have to have an intelligence yeah. of 12 or higher. Right. So... Yeah, uh, this is nuclear warhead <laughs> for ADM <laughs> specialists. <laughs> yeah, and then of course, you know, don't forget mechanics, mm -hmm. electronic specialists, uh, vehicle mechanic, and aircraft mechanic. Those are all things to consider as well. Uh, and even if you don't become a mechanic, at least get some mech, because somebody needs to have mech. 
you guys don't have mech, your vehicle's not going to run very long. So at least get 40 or 50 in mech, you know, if you, whatever you do. Okay. Well, I think I'll start with, uh, yeah, I'll go with cannon. Crew Great. Then. So cool. artillery is your service branch, and specialty is cannon crewmen. Okay. So specialty is artillery. And service branch is cannon crew. Um, we're done. That's backwards. So the benefits of specialty are, um, let's, let's see, maybe your can crew. So it, uh, IF is half cost, IF is half, and TBD 20. And that's track vehicle driver. So that's, that'll give you, that gives you some bonus starting out. And so you could put right here TBD and then 20 if you want, just to already have it there, because that's going to be your skills worksheet. And then you put IF below that. And if you want left to the side, one half as a reminder. So it costs half as many points as normal. Gotcha. All right. Now you are ready to that. So yeah, calculate that. And those will be your skill points that you're going to spend. Perfect. Okay. So start play I will stop the recording and start the recording so that people can just listen to the play part <laughs> instead of the exciting <laughs> character creation <laughs> 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 So, Ryan, did you qualify as an officer or not? Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> you have that low intelligence and no MEB. <laughs> yeah. Not working in my favor. My coolness under fire is pretty bad, too. Well, it's, a, it it's a four. Well, you want That's a lower. about average. Oh. Lower is better for yeah. coolness oh, okay. I have a three. I got one, yeah. too. Nice. Yes. I wish I had a one. Yeah. Uh, three <laughs> to five is pretty average. Oh, okay. I think, if I remember correctly, you roll a d10, and you want to roll above that, that number or higher, if I remember correctly. Okay. Okay. Whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I hit three twice, apparently. So 33? <laughs> Oof. Well, we have lots of maps <laughs> oh, gosh. of the surrounding area. Everyone goes Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so this is all you guys have uh, as far as working knowledge of the area. If you had an officer, you would have more in the way of maps. 
So you might want to, if you get a chance to search bodies and such, try to find maps of the, of the larger area. But this is where you're starting from, so you at least have working knowledge of the immediate area. Okay. And we'll and I'll be explain. I'll be reading a whole narrative. It's fairly lengthy about what, exactly where you are, and that way you can mark up your map as you need to. Okay. Because yeah, mark these up all you want. That's why. <laughs> I have plenty of copies now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I forgot to, um, I don't, didn't know exactly how I need to calculate the, uh, the base hit numbers. Yes, uh, for shooting and such. So you take whatever, so like combat rifleman, if you, what's your combat rifleman, 80? 50. 50, so you multiply that by 0. 0.6 for short range, 0. 0.3 for medium range, and 0. 0.1 for long. So 0. 0.1 for long is just going to be a 5. Okay. Um, for medium... I believe it would be uh, uh, 25? No. So well, close is 0.6, point three. medium um, is 0.3, and uh, long is 0.1. Okay. Okay, now I see how. And then I, then I round down. Correct. Okay. So let's see here. P... What is PST? Pistol. Pacific Standard 10. Huh, I don't have... Okay, so 50 at point 0.3 is 15. 15? Mm-hmm, 15%. And for uh, so 0.6 be, is 30. So 0.6 would be 30? Yep, for 50. So that's your percentage chance to hit at those ranges for that okay. weapon. And 15 and then 5. Okay, so it is percentage. Yep, those are your percentage of success. Okay. I wasn't aware that I needed a, um, to train in using pistols. If you want to use a pistol, yeah. Shooting a handgun is very different than shooting a rifle. Okay, I have riflemen, but I don't have... A... That's okay. Yeah. You're not an officer, so... Oh, no, the thing is, I bought a pistol. <laughs> I did too, but I have. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> well... You bought a pistol, you can just fire in the air. <laughs> Hope a bullet comes down and lands on it. <laughs> I good strategy. You might want to juggle some points. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Combat rifleman, I've got. At Remember, 50. you can't have less than twenty to to start a skill. Except mm -hmm. for a language. Except for a language. Yeah. Okay. Take at least 20 points away from something. I was thinking it would just be easier for me to get rid of the <laughs> pistol. That's fine. You because get your money back, you bet. Interesting, you're not going to use it. Go for it. Yeah, and all the bullets that I spent on it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. you bet. Because uh, my uh, body combat, which I guess is martial combat? Um, yeah, body combat is, is uh, hand, hand to hand. hand. Melee combat is with a weapon, like yeah. a bayonet or a knife. Or okay, so my or... melee combat is 50. Mm -hmm. My body combat is 70. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am going to juggle around some of some Yeah, that's okay to do. As long as you keep track. Well, I actually built myself a spreadsheet <laughs> to deal with all the math. Okay, good. <laughs> as long as you don't have any bugs in your spreadsheet. Is there a weight limit our Humvee has? A what? A weight limit to the yep. Humvee. Yep. Yeah. It, 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 uh, the char whoever has the vehicle character sheet, I have a whole bunch of stats to give you. If you're still working with stuff, I can probably. Yeah. Try to do for, I'm um, hand me the U.S. Army uh, equipment uh, module. What? You mean vehicle? Yeah, vehicle guide. That's it. That'll have everything for the Hummer. And you just have a stock Hummer, right? Uh, prob probably. Can we have so. a better one? <laughs> no, we no, already checked for that. So, <laughs> but um, but you've got the uh, enclosed type, so it looks like this without the machine gun. Okay. So that's without the turret, Ryan. That's what you guys are in. Oh, okay. Standard Hummer without the machine. Without the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> without the <Yeah>. useful part. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all useful, I guess. Yeah. 
And it doesn't have any special armor, it just has the normal metal view. These are not armor comers. No ball through glass. <laughs> nope. Very good. I put that. Because remember, the, that was a big problem, is they weren't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hardening hummers was not a standard thing, actually. They were meant to be transport vehicles, not combat vehicles. And the Middle East showed the problem with that design. <laughs> like, well, except because of all the, you know, because in a standard military situation, you've got your front line and your supply line, and you don't need your supply line all armored up, right? That's just to, to transport people and equipment. But that doesn't work in like the Middle East and such where the lines are fuzzy, right? In a standard war, it works fine. And, but the Hummers were designed for a standard contemporary war. Now, the newer vehicles they come out with, they've got the, you know, they can handle uh, improvised explosive devices and mines. And so they're, those are the replacements for the Hummers. They are way beefier. Right. Um, and that was because of how the less conventional warfare has been in the Middle East. They've completely changed, but it takes time. Right. But this, this is all before Afghanistan and Iraq, so none of those improvements have happened. So it's all still, you know, 1980s, 90s tech. Because right. innovation stopped once the missiles flew. All right, let's see. Summer. Uh, once you get to the bar, okay, squad carrier. Uh, who has the character sheet for the vehicle? He has it right now. All right. Uh, it is uh, price twenty thousand. I don't know if that's on there or not. It does not appear to be. No. Um. Oh, it's claiming it does come with the turret. <gasps> like like the default one does. Okay, so... Is there something that said you couldn't have a turret with the equipment? M, 200E, 300B, okay. And so you buy points from here, so... Uh, if you wanted to raise your aircraft mechanic, you would spend one of each of these points... Oh, that's the fire support system. vehicle versus squad. And so turret. any extra... It says armament, M2HB, no, or Mark 19 Anything that's not here, you just add down there. Oh, okay. So you just add down there. So even, and so okay, so it's not a turret mount. It's it's that you've got an opening in the. So it's not a turret mount because that's the uh, fire support vehicle. Okay. That's the one with the turret. Oh, that this just hard. has an opening in the roof on the driver on the passenger quit. side. So you pop up and there's a machine gun, uh, a machine gun there. So it comes with. So its weapon is because there should be a section there for weapon. Uh, I believe it's an M2HB. I'm on my page. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, armament M two HB MG on the commander side. So that's the the commander's the MG. Yes. M two HB MG. M two HB machine gun. M2HB. Or you could have the Mark nineteen uh, auto grenade launcher, whichever you prefer. What's the rate of fire? Um. For the M2HB? Yeah. Um, let's see here. Machine guns, M2HB. Um, rate of fire, three. Do you need the mag and range and all that? Mm. Or damage? Not yet. Okay, okay. rate of fire is three. Okay. All right. Um, and that comes with an entire case of ammo for it. Okay. The... Um. Move is 200 uh, on regular and 60 for off-road, so 200 slash 60. That? That's not combat move, that's regular move. I don't see any move, I'm probably not. Oh, I see combat speed. Yes, okay. that's it. Uh, combat speed's different though, it's going to okay. be regular speed. Uh, travel speed. Travel speed, there we go, 200 slash 60. So 200 is on the road, 60 is off-road. Okay. Combat speed is 70 slash 25. So seventy. So combat mode to drive slower. Shooting. Yeah. Okay. So you'd be seventy on the road and twenty five off road. And these are all kilometers per hour. And it's not, um, not amphibious, correct? Not amphibious. <laughs> Just making sure before yep, we go into the yep, yep, water. Yep. Uh, fuel capacity is ninety. Nice. Fuel consumption is thirty. Fuel type is D comma G comma A. So it can run on diesel, gas, or alcohol. Okay. So it's multi fuel. Load is 1.25 tons, so that's how much it can carry and weigh. Internal or external? That's internal load. Well, it's that's total load. 
Um, external is like, I think, pulling trailers and stuff. So to do that for internal, 1.25 tons. So you can load it up. That, I mean, that's what they're meant as a transport. It's about tons with an NES because it's... Just normal tons, 1.25 tons. Well, if it's in metric... Uh, yeah, it's in metric because it's uh, kilograms for everything. Yeah, so how much is that? 1.25 tons. It'd be 1,250 kilograms, okay. right? It's, isn't it so. one metric ton is 1,000 kilograms? Sure. I mean, using the metric system. I, I don't really know, actually. That's a good question. What is a <laughs> metric ton? That's what I would assume it is, yeah. just being metric being what it is. Yeah, 1,000 kilograms. 2,205 pounds. But, yeah, okay. Um, boy, I hate that I had to look that up. <laughs> That's embarrassing. What's the weight? Vehicle weight is two tons. Okay. Crew is two plus four. So you've got the driver and the commander, and then you can carry four people in the back. Okay. Um, how many passengers? That's the four. So it's the crew is two, passengers four. Okay. Very and high. maintenance is two. Two. So the higher the maintenance number, the more you have to spend. That's many, how many hours a week you have to spend, a mechanic has to spend, okay. to keep it from breaking down. Uh, what about wear volume? Uh, we have to roll for that. That's basically how many people oh. it's been handed through. Yeah. Let me find out where I determined that. It's been a while since I did this. Disease is a big thing in this, by the way. So is visibility. All right. In the course of the game, players will be called upon to repair vehicles and other equipment, including your guns. So gunsmith is a good skill to have, by the way. Have At least one of you. Which is either broken down or suffered damage. Um, parts. One part required for every 10% of damage the components receive. Blah, blah, blah. Fabrication. Time. Tools. Breakdowns. A vehicle, the wear value of 8, has an 80% chance of breakdown that will be major. So you want a low wear value. Okay. Current wear value of the vehicle is, t uh, is 10 times the percentage chance of major breakdown. Uh, minor breakdowns, major, minor breakdowns, major. Where the heck? Oh my God. Don't remember. Um, um, when we get to skills, you can have both regular success, outstanding success, failure, and, and catastrophic failure. So you have gradients of success and failure, okay. by the way. Crits, basically. Crits and fumbles. Um, explosives, charges, damage, residual. By the way, equipment it can be damaged. It's like if a... If a a bullet gets inside and hits your weapons, it can ignite them, just so you know. It is realistic. Also, just so you know. Can upgrade these two. What is LCG? Oh, Large I caliber gun. Like a tank. No. Okay. Like An LB? Tank gun. Yeah. What's oh, okay. that? Long range, LB is long range ballistics? No, L LB is longbow. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm there's, a, there's a sheet that describes all the skills. It's like not on okay. Longbow is not on Oh, that's in the addendum? Maybe. There, there's it a Murata sheet. Might, I think it might be part of HP. Animals in combat, recovery, visibility, chronological background. So I think just roll a d10. Okay. What'd you roll? Six. So that, I think that's your wear value. Oh, that's not very good, is it? It's in the middle. I find a chart that says otherwise, I'll let you know. Okay. 
I'm okay with my body combat going down to five as long as my melee combat is you know, going up. I'd rather have a weapon than have to rely on my fists. Wait, mm -hmm. do, does your stats have to be at least 20? You have to have at least a 20 in any skill. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I basically just yeah. fiddled them around. Sure. And the body combat is five. It's based off of uh, uh, my 50 in body combat. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> I just made sure that my combat rifleman and my melee combat went up by 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for hand-to-hand -hand fighting, there's no range modifiers. Yeah. So it is a straight percentage roll. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'd rather have a 60% with the oh, machete yeah. that oh, I have right. than oh, yeah, the 50% yeah, yeah. with the, my fists. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay. A vehicle requires nearly constant maintenance to keep it running, even in the best of times. And these are not the best of times. These are the worst of times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, people used to driving civilian cars on good roads are seldom aware of how much more punishment a military vehicle takes, even something as mundane as a cargo truck. In the world of Fly 2000, a good mechanic is worth their weight in gold, and an indispensable if the players have vehicles they want to keep running. A good mechanic, for all their worth, will sometimes be considered a pest by the rest of the group. They will want to spend as much of their time as possible with the vehicles, going over them and conducting minor repairs and preventive maintenance. They will be constantly searching for more spare parts, whether they are needed now or not. So that's where scrounge comes in handy. Sometimes they'll be needed and might not be available then, so they get them now uh, is their philosophy. Uh, there are very few vehicles left which are in perfect condition. Most have been repeatedly repaired and rebuilt, sometimes with homemade parts, and are generally worn out. Every vehicle has a base maintenance number. This is the number of hours per week that should be spent in routine preventive maintenance to keep it in good working shape, assuming it is in mint condition. The actual time spent in maintenance is up to the players, but should be influenced by the actual conditions of the vehicle. Whenever characters acquire a vehicle during the game, including during character generation, you roll a d10. The higher the wear condition, the more worn out the vehicle. Whenever the characters are in a position to buy or sell a vehicle, its true value is determined by dividing its base price by its wear number. Thus, a vehicle which would normally be 20000 but had a wear value of 8 would only be worth 2500 Each vehicle has the potential to break down each time it spends a period in either movement or combat. The percentage chance of a potential breakdown is equal to the vehicle's wear number. A potential breakdown does not mean the vehicle will actually suffer a serious malfunction. Avoiding an actual breakdown is a task average mechanic performed by the character who did the last maintenance on the vehicle. If the vehicle has not been maintained its required amount in the last week, the potential breakdown automatically results in an actual breakdown. So if you don't have a mechanic work on it two hours a week, minimum? Breakdown. Breakdown which is deadly. Oh. You go to step on the gas and it quits right as you're under fire. <laughs> um, so how many breakdowns does our vehicle have? Well, percentage chance. So you have a 60% chance okay. of breakdown if you don't maintain it. So what do I put down here then? 60%? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if a mechanic spends twice as much time in maintenance on a vehicle as required, they reduce their potential... Oh, maybe it's not 60, maybe it's 6. 6%? So 10 breakdowns increases your wear value by 1. A vehicle which is wear value 10 and has 10th breakdown is no longer repairable, good only for salvaging parts. Um, there we go. Yeah, I guess it's only. I guess it's only the. Per, I guess it's just eight percent, not eighty percent. Well, or six percent. I mean, um, assuming that you're working on it. I'll have to double check on that. I, I'm getting conflicting in, info in my head on that. <laughs> Time for the actual adventure. But, you can oh well. as many as you'd like. Oh, I'll we'll have to do it another session, so I, I guess. So mm -hmm. about ten. But the, you, uh, ex you can choose to find all of them for you. Okay. When you have enough points to do it. And like, I guess a good plan of action would be to try and use up all your points. Or? You definitely want to use up all your points. Oh, you, oh yeah. Because you, you get use more. up all points. Oh, okay. Now money is a little different. You can save up ten percent as gold. Okay. Which I did not. That's okay. <laughs> Like, might barter well much do. Stuff. Wait. You can barter stuff. Yeah. What was TVD again? 
track, track vehicle, vehicle driver. Oh, okay. Are you all done, Riley? Um, well, still with the vehicle. Oh, you need the um, the armor. Yeah, the vehicle damage location. Okay, let me get that to you. So does anybody have mech? I'm doing it right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm about to have mech. <laughs> um, and as far as skills, you notice there's M, B, and E. Right. So that means whether you can apply military points, background points, or education points. Oh, you can... It, you it can. says what you're allowed to apply. Well, you have to allow. You have to apply all three of them if it has all three. No, you don't have to right. apply all three. You can pick from any of the three. God, oh, you have a lot more points. Pick. Oh my gosh, I have a lot more points. Holy yeah, cow. no, yeah, those are the ones you're allowed to use. Which means you can use I thought it required only use education points. I thought it required one from each. No. Oh my god. If it says okay, M so only, you can only I'm military just, points. So I'm not. If it done. says B, it's background <laughs> points. Mm -hmm. If it says all three, you can choose any combination. I see. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't clear. <laughs> that makes a big difference. You <laughs> should have a lot of skills. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's just, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go through that again. <laughs> is, there like a, is there a cap, though? Like, uh, 100, uh, 80. 80. 80. 80 is the cap. Yeah, remember, from oh, yeah, 1 to 50 over. is point for point. Except for yeah, 51 to 80 is 2 points, and you can't go higher than okay. 80. Okay. Ah. Um, and, of course, you can only apply it from the correct category. Because some skills are military only or educational only or background only. I'm going to go full even the Yeah. I don't even know where to start now. Because now I have a bunch of points. I don't know what to do with them. Um, just start fresh and then just subtract what you have, and that will help you know what you have left. That would be the easiest way to do okay. it. Okay. Yeah, it was actually fairly easy for me to move the points around. It was amazing. You made a spreadsheet. I made a spreadsheet. <laughs> that makes sense. Nicely done, Jack. <laughs> Again, assuming there's no bugs in your spreadsheet. <laughs> I try to make sure that there aren't any bugs. To err is human. To really louse things up takes a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know me, I'm pro-tech. But that's also the reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. It multiplies human capacity. And that can go in either direction. <laughs> Perfect example, Windows Vista. Exactly. <laughs> or Windows Millennium. Let's not talk about Windows Millennium. <laughs> that which we shall not name. <laughs> <laughs> which came that first again? So bad. Well, Vista, Vista came after, right? Millennium was Windows two th was okay. You had Windows two thousand and Windows oh. Millennium. Windows Millennium was the last of the nine X kernel, mm -hmm. the DOS the DOS based mm -hmm. kernel. Windows two thousand was the NT based kernel. Yeah. And everything after that was based on the two thousand NT based kernel. Okay. So when NT it went, so you had you had Windows in the DOS days. Mm -hmm. Then you had Windows 3, Windows 4 workgroups, all that. And around the same time, you had Windows NT. Then you had Windows 95, Windows NT 3.5. Mm -hmm. Then you had Windows 98 and different, you know, service packs. Mm -hmm. And then you had NT 4.0. Then you had Windows Millennium around 2000 and Windows 2000 around 2000. Windows Millennium was for consumers. Windows 2000 was for businesses. Mm -hmm. Windows 2000 was NT kernel-based. Windows Millennium was Windows 9X slash DOS based. Mm -hmm. That was the end of the 9X DOS based kernel in 2000. So now you continue with Windows 2000, you then came out with Windows XP, mm -hmm. and then you had Windows Vista, and then you had Windows 7, which was a rollback. So Vista, <laughs> Vista had all of, to make the um, content <laughs> providers happy for movies and, and, and all of that, they put all this end to end encryption in everything. So they would make it really hard to record videos and movies. This was all the anti-piracy stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was so bad that nobody, you know, companies couldn't go to it. And they all started jumping ship. I helped tons of corporations jump to Linux. Mm -hmm. Linux adoption went through the roof during Windows Vista. Yeah, I was it, in CompuSA during that time. It nearly destroyed Windows, Microsoft's Windows division. 
So they rolled Windows 7, which was Vista with everything stripped out. <laughs> which actually wasn't that bad, right? Once it wasn't they stripped that bad. all the crap out, Windows 7 actually was okay. Mm -hmm. And then they did Windows 8, mm -hmm. which sucked, and 8.1 which use. sucked. And Windows 10, which sucks, which and now they're going to the subscription model and everything, really. Advertising and subscription model. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. And a lot of companies are still running Windows 7. Because yeah. that's, that was the last stable <laughs> Yeah, release. That's what mo that's where our, basically our entire school is using, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because everything since then sucked by Windows standards. Mm -hmm. It all sucks, but <laughs> compared to other standards. Let's not get elitist here. <laughs> I'm just still talking about reality as far I as know, I know, I know. reliability and security. <laughs> it's just a fact. Okay. okay that's... But choices are limited. With Solaris bought out and gone by Oracle and you know, choices are limited. Okay, there's that. Okay. Time to see what other things I need to purchase. Mm -hmm. Because I was asking if there was any real difference between sniper rifles and, say, an assault rifle. I'm missing range. Uh, rate of fire, yeah, range and rate of fire and damage piercing. A sniper rifle typically pierces armor better, mm -hmm. um, but it's a very low rate of fire, um, and usually a low magazine capacity. Assault rifle is shorter range, usually closer in, in combat, higher rate of fire, uh, not as good against armor as, as a sniper rifle. Okay, so... so I mean, it, it's like reality. Yeah, so I have, well, I... The last time I actively used a gun, I was in Boy Scouts. Oh, well, I got a whole safe full of them. Yeah, but I'm not going to be practicing it any, any, anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of getting... I took my muscle nagat with me on the road trip for safety. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever have to use it? The Russian sniper rifle? No, I asked if you ever had to use it. I did not have to use it on the road trip. <laughs> Where's the one that I shot through? Let's start this one. Okay, so considering that I have uh, um, ranks in the combat rifleman, it probably better be. It's probably better for me to replace the pistol with an assault rifle. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Much. And don't ignore the HK Cobb. That's combat assault rifle. That, that's a shot, machine gun shotgun, basically. The range is really short, mm -hmm. but it kicks butt short range. Mm -hmm. So check this out. Ooh. That's what the mo this is quarter inch steel. Look what the muscle I got did. That's it didn't pretty, even spin, it went through it so fast. That's a pretty clean hit. <laughs> yeah. That was about 75 feet, nice. just with a straight sight. So. Oh. 1935 Russian sniper rifle. So 22 hits it, it makes it spin. Right. It doesn't dent it at all with 22. 22 does not even dent these. It might take the paint off at of most, even that doesn't come off very easily with a 22. So these spin quite well. This I thought I missed because it didn't even move. I just saw a puff of dust behind it. Yeah. And they came up and it had gone right through it, just like butter. Jeez. Yeah. So you the, said the HK Combat Assault? Yeah, HK Ka, yeah. Does that use a uh, combat rifle? No, uh, 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 yes, CRM, yes. That uses CRM. Yeah. Okay. It's so range, it's useless against armor, but for mowing people down, oh. it is sweet. Because it's a machine gun shotgun, it's 12 gauge. <laughs> it's an assault. Machine, uh, assault shotgun. Have you ever seen Expendables? The movie. Which one? I don't. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. You'd have to remind me. I know of it. I it's with all of the famous. It's yeah. It's basically all the old <laughs> action, action stars come back for. A... I don't think so. Oh, there's a scene where uh, uh, Terry Crews, he's spending. He's been spending the entire movie talking about how wonderful his gun is. Yeah. And just the sound of it. And near the end of the movie. You get to hear it before you see it. And he, he's got a combat a, a, a assault um, a shotgun. Okay. Just boom, 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 boom. And it's gratuitous violence. Yeah. But funny gratuitous violence. Okay. Well, then there's the, then there's the, the chain gun, the 20 millimeter chain gun. goes, <laughs> You see that in Predator and stuff? Mm -hmm. The guy loses his arm. And he goes, 
But that that's kind of unrealistic to be able to hold that. <laughs> what do you, you mean? I, I'm going to dual wield them. <laughs> I'm going to dual wield them. <laughs> Sold on the HK. <laughs> Because yeah, again, I if anybody's wearing body armor and you hit him in the armor, it's useless penetration. But it'll, you know, it'll mess him up still. They I just, just, I'll just aim for the head area. That's much <laughs> harder to hit. That's way harder. With a shotgun. Center mass. Center mass. It's always center mass. You can do aim shots, but it's really hard to hit. Just aim slightly up <laughs> with the shotgun. Yeah. Head? No head. <laughs> So in this, a combat turn is 30 seconds long and divided into six five-second combat rounds. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. Sure. A combat turn is 30 seconds mm -hmm. broken into six five-second combat rounds. So a combat round is five seconds, mm -hmm. and a turn is, is, uh, is, is six of those. Okay. One action can be performed by each player in each combat round. Each action takes only one combat round to complete. Uh, many combats can be resolved using the combat turn instead of resolving each combat round in order. Each player should tell the referee what he's doing during the turn. Then the referee resolves the fire of hostile NPCs while telling the players what they see and then when to resolve their own fire. Um, I generally go ahead and just resolve it round by round. Um, mm -hmm. If it's a mass combat, then, then we switch to turn mode, where if I've got a whole bunch of people to resolve. But... Hopefully, I won't have to, if you guys have to do that with three of you, and I have to go to turn mode, you're in trouble. Uh -huh. <laughs> Unless you've got really good armor to hunker down in, you're in a lot of trouble. Okay. Figure out what type of weapons, what type of uh, uh, ammunition it, it takes. Okay, um, Riley, huh? where it says unarmored cargo, that's the numbers you write down. I might have to define them for you. Where is um, cargo? Hmm? I just see cargo. I don't no, no, I know that. I'm saying your vehicle is an unarmored car vehicle. Uh, uh, cargo vehicle. Cargo vehicle. It doesn't have any armor. Oh. No, well, okay, well, still, what is. So uh, let me take it, I'll fill it in, because okay. it'll take too long to explain. Nice. Uh, I can explain it to you once it's there, but it'll take too long to tell you what to write. Yeah. So I'll just write it down for you. So right, left hole, G, H, B, C, at zero, zero, zero. All right, there's no armor on the Hummer, I'm pretty sure. Effectively no armor. I mean, you saw what my muscle and the got did against quarter-inch steel. Yeah. And so Hummer is no... <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that uh, Remington made the Musnagats from the up until about 1917, until the Bolshevik Re Revolution? They made like a million of them between eight, 1871 or 1891, whatever it was, till 1917. Then after that, the Soviets, you know, did it. Heard that on a gun show on the road yesterday. Did not know that. A little trivia. 1891. They have been in a lot of wars. Well, they're even as recently used as 2014 pro-Russian conflict in Ukraine. They were still being used. Huh. So 7.62. So number built, 37 million of them between 1891 to 1965. They hold up really well. Effective firing range without optics, 500, 500 meters or 550 yards. With a scope, 875 yards, 800 meters. I'm trying to find a picture of this thing. Of what? The HK. HK Ka? 
Um, I think it's kind of, I think it, it's actually, it was a theoretical gun. I don't know that it actually was ever a production. I'm spinning I mean, pictures, was, just. Yeah, okay. I just don't know that it ever quite caught on. Basically, I think it was a replacement for the Tommy gun, which was the um, trench sweeper, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, muzzle velocity, 2,838 feet per second. It's respectable. <laughs> That's a respectable muzzle velocity. <laughs> So this is considered a configuration weapon. What do you mean, bullpup? Yeah, the bull, bullpup, which yeah, is so the, the actions behind the trigger instead of yeah, it's Heckler and Kosh combat mm -hmm. solo. Yeah, which makes for a smaller again. It's for closer in quarters combat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, it uses twelve gauges. Yep, twelve gauge ammo, shotgun ammo, which is easy to find and easy to make. That's one of the big advantages. Yep. Oh, it's on Wikipedia. There's a picture of it right there mm -hmm. on Wikipedia. Mm. I was just trying to get an idea of uh, the look in terms of like yeah. placement on my character. Produced by Heckler and Kosh and Winchester Olin in the 1980s. A close assault weapon system. 10 round, 12 gauge, bullpup. Two firing modes, semi-auto and full auto. The gun is also ambidextrous. Mm. Oh, there is 12 gauge. Rate of fire, two to 300 rounds per minute. Effective range, 150 meters. 10 round, attachable box magazine. Iron sights or integrated optical sight. Recoil operated with moving barrel and self-regulated gas assist. Muzzle velocity, uh, about 500 meters per second. So compare that again to the muscle I got, 2300 feet, feet per second. That's meter. Uh, okay, 1770 feet per second versus 2300. So pretty good velocity, but the range is really short. 160 yards versus 800. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I figure between assault, uh, you know, close range and long range. So it yeah. was tested by the U.S. military, beating out the AAI corporations, Pan Associates, and Artisans' entries into the competition. The cause were canceled. And production, both military and civilian, halted. So, as I say, some of these things were kind of new back when this game was written, but have since become passe. But that's okay for this alternate reality. Mm -hmm. So this thing doesn't have clips. Yeah, it should. No, I'm, uh, the the twelve gauges don't have clips. N the normal twelve gauges don't. The yeah. HKK does. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to load up my. I'm trying to figure out, you know, where like the spare clips are. Uh, uh, uh you, um, I don't know that the list actually lists any clips at all. Let me look at my um, errata sheet. That might that might provide it. Because there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff missing in the errata sheet. Okay, so I'll, it. I'll just have the, in terms of inventory. Yeah. I'll, I'll have the my my box of twelve gauges and I'll. Yeah. If you buy a box of ammo, then I'll say it comes with two clips with the box. Okay. You know, if you buy it, uh, just automatically. I'll just say that for mm -hmm. convenience' sake until I can find something that's you know more useful. Okay. <clears throat> oh, shit. Uh, what? I 
subtracted the number that was too big. So the skill the hunting bow should be LB longbow. That's a tight you know, yeah, bow. Yeah, that's on the errata. Um, and if you can't find TVD or WVD, that's it's an have. errata thing. Oh. If you're looking for it to build your skill up. What um, does that mean? Like errata? Uh, uh, missing oh. errors and corrections. Ah, okay. Um, it, it, well, a lot of books come out with mistakes, and then they have to release an errata sheet and you know, mm -hmm. to do it. What is the what is the requirement for TVD? Uh, TVD is MBE, and then footnote two, comma three. So you have to look at the footnotes oh. at the bottom for for that. <clears throat> um, also, mines were accidentally left out, but I've got the info if you want mines. Um, automatic pistol, the Tokarev. Some machine guns, battle rifles, melee weapons. Anybody buying a machete? It's twenty dollars. Already got it. Okay. I got one too. Oh, was it in there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, seeing, what did it, what was it listed as though? Maybe the price is wrong. Oh. Uh, because this is an errata. It says melee weapons, machete cost twenty dollars. What was it listed as? Looking it up right now. Okay. Hmm. Your vehicle is not radiologically shielded. Also, keep in mind radios are very handy. A lot of people forget those. Well, I've got everything. It's pretty good. Um, body armor is really helpful. Didn't I start with a helmet? Yeah, but I mean, you can actually buy Kevlar body armor. Makes it, it it's a life and death thing. Just so you know. Okay. I'd rather I be might. alive and slow than... Uh, then I might go buy some of that. Dead and light. Bayonet costs $20 as well. Okay. So S, for, for availability, S, C, and V. S is scarce, C is common, and V is very common. You're asking about S, C, and, and V on equipment. And is R rare? Or, okay, but so how come there's two of them? Two what? The C. City versus countryside. And S R. So that would be scarce in the city and rare in the countryside. Oh, okay. Well, because when you said it, I was looking at C C. So they, I thought yeah, that's common, common. So yeah. common in both, in both. Yeah. When you said city countryside, I thought that's what the C's meant. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Gotcha. Um, but that's mostly if during gameplay, if you if you're saying, hey, is there this equipment available? And I look and I roll. And it tells me if it's scarce or common, okay. a percentage chance there's it'll be in that area. That's what that tells the GM, basically. Okay. Um, just so you know how expensive fuel is, this is per liter, not per gallon. $48 per liter for gas, for actual gasoline. Mm -hmm. Versus, and a aviation gas is 60 That's actually pretty low by today's standards. Diesel is 40 Ethanol is $8 per gallon, and methanol is $4 per gallon. Okay. Methanol is the most common. Gas... Avgas, diesel are extremely rare, and ethanol is fairly common. Methanol is the very common. I don't know where the uh, machete is. So one week of MREs is $170. I still don't have a weight. Huh. Well, yeah, the machete in here is uh, Wait, 50. Not, right? Oh, it's per kilogram. Oh, okay. oh and here it's 50? Yeah, so I have 50. an extra 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I did the math. <laughs> so the, the food price for MREs, meals ready to eat, is $8 per kilogram. If you want one week of MREs, that's $170. Which, weight wise, uh, let's see, weight. It doesn't say the much it is. Okay. No, it was 50. Weigh, I mean. Well, how much it weighs? Yeah. Two kilograms. Okay. For what? The machete is yeah. uh, two kilograms. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Food weighs a lot. <laughs> oh, no. It does. 22 kilograms for a week's worth of MREs. Which is... $170 for one week's MREs. How many is that? 21? 22 kilograms. Well, are there, how many MREs is that? 21? 
That's a... Uh, Three per day? Well, it's 22 kilograms, so... Didn't we start out with two? Okay, so I did this, yeah, it works out to, because um, it says how many kilograms you have to consume per day. Let me write that down. Somewhere I calculated this. I mean, somewhere I came up with that number from one of the books, probably. Um, so, eating, maintenance of uh, people and animals. What is a jerry can? A, a gasoline gas can, can. Big gas ah, can. Okay. Five liter jerry can or whatever. I've got a couple of them out on the front porch. Um, okay, that's animals. People. Food. You must eat three kilograms of food every day to remain healthy. And so, so yeah. we, we started out with two MREs or two weeks worth of MREs. Two weeks. Two weeks. Ah, okay, that's a lot more. Yeah. So I'm going to only be carrying some of that. That's 44 kilograms. Okay, there we go. Radio. Let's see here. I'm going to be a little overweight. The man packer um, uh, radio, is that the one on the back? Yes. Okay, it's I don't want you that. Wear. <laughs> you can buy one to have in the vehicle if you want. Upgrade your vehicle to have one if you want. Walkie talkies are good too. Hand radio. Um, that might be in the errata here if it's missing there. Well, I, I, they have the two, the two kilometer hand radio. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, walkie-talkie. The secure man pack vehicular radios um, are five slash twenty-five kilometers. So it, man packs five kilometers, vehicles twenty-five kilometers. And their availability of RR. What else were you guys wanting to know? How important Just are the Geiger counters? Depends on how much you want to know about how much you're being irradiated. Well, I don't care. I won't last that long. What, what is Some the people would rather not know. What is the likelihood that I will gain superpowers? Ooh. Zero in this game. Uh, this oh. is not Gamma World. Oh. Zero. Um, I'm going to interrupt you guys because we're almost out of time and I want to read the intro. Mm -hmm. And we can, if you can stick around late, you can finish your character. You're welcome to. But I want to, before we... Um, so will we does actually... anybody need to leave right at 9, as usual, which um, is okay, because you're welcome to stay and finish your characters. I, I don't have anything I have to head off to. Um, I've, I've got to get home and sleep, Okay. but uh, I'll probably leave around just to finish That's off fine. my equipment. Okay, because um, I want to be able to read the intro to you, but I'll wait until... Just, just let me read it to you before you leave, though. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. go ahead and read it now. Okay. Give me a finish. I'm going to finish writing down... Um, your vehicle stats, and then I'll do that. Okay. So will we be playing next Thursday? Uh, this Thursday is theory. Yeah. So, so next Thursday. So yeah, it'd be yeah, it'd be the following Thursday. Okay. Because of how we alternate. So this Thursday will be theory discussion. We'll continue where we left off with good game mastering and mm -hmm. Robin's laws. I'll be reading from that when we discuss that for good game mastering. So you'll definitely want to be there for that. It's mm -hmm. very GM specific training. If you can, of course. Right. Not, of course, if you can't. You can always watch the videos. Oh, yeah. um, if you want access to the recorded videos after the stream, you have to be like a Patreon supporter, though it's hard for me to get you access and such. Um, I mean, I can do it. If you say, can you send me this video, I can send you the private link and such if you have a very specific request. Um, otherwise, you have to wait about a month or so for it to be public right. on our YouTube channel. Gotcha. So, and I encourage everybody to be a donor. <laughs> volunteers, are, well, we do have volunteers who are donors as well. Right. Um, to, you know, just to help support. Mm -hmm.
So there is your, so what that does is those are the different angles that a vehicle can be shot from. Mm -hmm. And then that's the order that the bullets pass through or the explosion passes through. So let's say it gets hit from the right side lower hole or uh, glasses or hole bottom, right? That's okay. the top one. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to get hit would be the engine, right? The, oh, from okay. the right side. The next thing to get hit, so that's E. For mm -hmm. F, the next thing that gets hit is uh, fuel. Then uh, C is the commander, so whoever's in that gunner seat. Yeah. Then P is passengers, and then S is stores. So that that's that's the order. So it could hit the fuel what's, line and stuff. What's stores? Stores the storage. Yes. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just whatever. Um, so for example, uh, if it's um, uh, front whole side F H S midway down, the first person to get hit is the driver, then the engine, then fuel, then commander. <laughs> so that's and then I have to calculate damage for each person or thing it's passing through. Oh. <laughs> and so what's all the zeros in No armor. Oh, that would be how much armor. armor you have. That's what <laughs> subtracts from the energy of the, the bullet or explosion. Okay, so it's not good to have zeros in every single category. It's very bad. Okay. It means you have no armor. Just making sure. It does the Hummer does not protect you at all from bullets or explosions. Okay, good to good it, to know. It just perforates it like paper. Butter. So now it is possible to armor up a Hummer okay. with resources. Some vehicle buy Kevlar a panel. Kev Just What's that? Vehicle Kevlar, vehicle Kevlar panel. Yep. Yeah, Eight hundred. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Eight hundred dollars. Is it only? Yeah. Is it, can you only per, put it in one spot? Too? Yeah, that's just one spot. <laughs> that's one armor rating area, uh, and they're only worth what ten armor, I think. Oh gosh. I, I, I could be wrong, but because your body they, armor is ten. How much do they weigh? How do you make money? How do you make money? That's a good question. Uh, well, we do deals. Well, okay. I mean, it, it's it's a free market economy. <laughs> where, where where are we buying stuff from? Well, if there are towns, there like you can figure that all out. You're behind eBay? enemy lines. Well, I'm lines. talking about at no. There's the no beginning. internet. The internet's destroyed. I know, I know. But from the beginning, if we start out with like a certain amount of money and we get stuff. Oh, so you can you can exchange out of your starting money. You can you can change ten percent of that into gold coins or gold miscellaneous right. that you have for later. If you want to, instead of spending it all, otherwise you have to spend it all. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll make it yeah, ten percent of your starting amount can be set aside as gold, and then you have to spend the rest. Where do you? Where does our cash? Is that? Oh, is that? Uh, purchase allowance. It, yeah, purchase allowance. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Because okay. it's all military issue, but you can say that you you know made a certain income before it all went to heck. And, <laughs> That's what okay. you turned into gold, jewelry, and coins, and what have you over time. So it's seven thousand. Oh, it goes That's fast nice. though. Things are expensive though. Things yeah. go fast. Yeah. You're dealing usually. You're going to be dealing mostly with black market type okay. stuff. So it's going to be. Let's well, so figure out the ten percent gold now. That's yeah. Thousand. Yep. All. Yep. Yep. It's well worth it. <laughs> all right. Yeah, as I said, combat in this is deadly. <laughs> so people will want to use their brains if they want to survive. Okay. I mean, at first you don't have a choice. All you can do is run. Or you can stand and fight. Wait, isn't... Shoot. What? For equipment purchase allowance. Yes. Is the time in months or in years? Months. Oh. And that's a 600, correct? Not a... I'd, I'd have to be looking at the time. Uh, do you have that higher def version? Uh, of the map sheet? Yeah. Well, that's a 500, okay. Yeah, you get quite a bit. You get like tens of thousands. Oh, so okay. So 20 I start with twenty four hundred. So that's twenty four hundred or twenty four thousand. Twenty four hundred because I used yours instead. So I get twelve times that. You mean you use Drake's instead, the bad copy? No, I I used years for time instead of months. Oh, years, not yours. Okay. Years. No, okay. I used years. Sorry. Well, the thing is, time is actually a. Uh, it, it, a it's stat a set here. thing. It's yeah, a set yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. I don't know why. By the way, I have 29 months in combat. Okay. Yeah. That's a fair amount. Yeah. How it's many? almost three tours. I have 48. Oh, that's four tours. <laughs> I have $24,000. My 14 in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you want me to go ahead and read to you the, uh, the beginning intro here since we're getting late? Yeah. 
So this is Adventure Handout Escape from Kalitz. This is Kalitz Poland. Death of a Division. Let me switch into uh, <laughs> radio narrator mode. Yeah. This is a story. Uh, we should have pulled our money and bought a howitzer. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be able to pull it. You can. You guys can yeah, do we that. Can you can do that. Uh, that's not unusual for people to pull a cannon behind them. Let's turn a load. Oh, crap. Not Remember, enough. you got to have ammo as well. Mm -hmm. I also don't have any weight. Ooh, can I buy like an exoskeleton that can hold a bunch of weight for me? Mm, didn't exist. Dang it. Can I craft an 